everyone welcome to our channel Rebecca Stu and the crew I'm Rebecca and today we have some Dollar Tree DIYs for you guys we have a few different ideas to share so let's go over our supplies for our first project we'll be using this crafter square fabric panels we'll also need a doily a rotary cutter two snap lids one ring for the mason jars two uh, magnets and then we also will need some hot glue some paint a ruler a paintbrush, some scissors, a pencil, and a hammer. I'm also going to use these little ladybug or bumblebee buttons from Dollar Tree. So let's get crafty. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint one of the snap lids. They come in a 10 pack from Dollar Tree as well as the rings. And we're going to paint this pink. I ended up doing two coats. I just wait for it to dry in between coats. Then I'll do the second coat and we'll set this aside to dry. This is just to hide the silver that's um, the color of the lid once we put the doily over it. So now we're going to use this crafter square fabric panel. We're just going to remove the sticker and unroll it. And when you open it up, you get this really large square. So we will fold it in half to create a rectangle. Just smooth out the lines the best you can. And then take your ruler. You're going to line it up on the folded edge and you're going to mark with your pencil every two inches. Now you don't have to be really exact here as long as you're close enough to the two inch mark that will work and we're going to mark all the way across the bottom then take your ruler and your rotary cutter and you're just going to slice through the fabric to create these strips once we're done doing this we will open them up and cut them in half but this is just a little bit faster to cut the whole strip at once and i love these rotary cutters from dollar tree for just a dollar 25 if you haven't seen them or used one yet, or if you've seen them and you haven't bought one, I highly recommend purchasing one. They're really easy to use. So now we'll take our fabric and we're just cutting along that fold to get two pieces of fabric for each strip that we cut. And then once we have these all cut in half, we're going to um, trim the ends to make them a little bit more decorative. So we're folding the fabric in half and then we we cut from the open end towards the um, edge there to create pretty much like a triangle pattern. If you cut the opposite way on the fold towards the other corner, then you'll get the dovetail. So now we're going to take our fabric that we just cut. We're going to fold it in half to create a loop. Now take your loop and you're going to put it underneath of the mason jar ring. And you're going to just hold that loop open wrap those two ends around and then slide it through the open hole pull it tight and you've got these cute little slip knots of fabric that you can wrap all the way around your ring and we will keep doing that until we use all of the pieces of fabric i want to say that in all i had i believe 24 pieces of fabric that i cut from this one I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's pretty close to what I had. So anywhere between 18 and 24 pieces should be enough to completely fill in this ring. And now for the last five pieces, I just sped up the video a little bit so you don't have to watch me put every single piece of fabric on. It's a little bit redundant. So here are the last few pieces. If it starts to get tight, like you don't know if you're going to have enough space, just keep sliding those um, pieces that are already on towards the edges and it'll open up so that you can get those last few pieces on and once you have the last one on you just want to fluff it up and move your petals all around so you have them nice and even around your ring so here's what it looks like so far and i go in and i kind of pull all the knots tight to make sure that they're as tight next to that ring as possible Now we'll flip it over so that we have the back on top. And then what we're going to do is take our doily. We're going to fold it in half. And then we will cut it right up the center. And then we'll cut it one more time to create two pieces. That's just so that we can overlap the doily and kind of move the direction it's in to get as much coverage as possible. So I'm going to put my first piece in this direction and then flip the second piece in the opposite direction 
and take that painted mason jar lid. You're going to put it right in the middle. That's not going to just pop down in there with all that uh, material there. That's why you need the hammer. So you just want to kind of hold onto the edge until you get one piece to pop down under that ring. And then just keep using your hammer and work your way around in a circle. And eventually it creates almost like a bowl like style or shape and um, just forces that doily down into the center. And that's a really nice tight fit. So you don't really have to worry about it coming loose. Here's what it looks like so far. As you can see, we can see a little bit of that pink paint through the doily, which is why we painted it. So then you can go ahead and cut off most of the excess of the doily. If you'd like, you can fold it all in towards the center and glue it down in the middle. It's really up to you. I'm just folding the little bit of excess that's there down towards the center. And then I'll take my glue gun and I'm going to create a ring of hot glue all the way around here. And then take another snap lid and we're just going to glue it to the back to cover all of the uneven fabric that is underneath. And then we're going to take our two button magnets from Dollar Tree. We'll add a little bit of hot glue to the lid and just glue our magnets on. And then we'll flip our flower over and I decided to use one of the little bumblebees, I'm sorry, one of the ladybugs on the flower. I just glue her on with some hot glue. And that is our first project. Our second project is basically the same thing. I am using um, a bandana. It's a solid color bandana for this one. So the pieces are going to be a little bit larger, but I'm doing the exact same process. We're just cutting the strips at two inches. I'm going to cut the ends a little bit different. I'm going to dovetail the ends of these strips of fabric. And as you can see, these are a little bit longer than the last piece of fabric that we used. So our flower will be a little bit bigger when it is finished. So just doing the same process, we're just going to wrap the fabric around the ring until we have all of the pieces used up and completely have this ring filled in. Like I said before, just keep moving the fabric as close together as possible and squeezing it together and you'll be able to fit all of this fabric in. You wanna put as much as possible so you have a really nice flower and if you have any pieces that are a little bit too big looks a little weird around the edges go ahead and trim those so now for the center of this flower we're just going to put black paint over the lid and again we'll do two coats of paint i should have done this first and i had to wait for it to dry to finish our project So then we took two pieces of burlap and we're just going to overlap like we did with the um, doily in the last flower. And then again, our flowers upside down. And then you'll take your burlap and you'll force it down into the center and then take your snap ring lid that's painted and you'll put that in the middle and just kind of hold it in place and start hammering and it will snap down underneath of that ring. Then go ahead and glue down your burlap if you like, or you can just fold it in towards the center or trim it off. It's really up to you. This one I decided to go ahead and glue the excess down. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll take another one of our um, ring lids here and we're going to just add some hot glue to the back, glue it on, and then add two of our um, button magnets. And then we'll add a ladybug to this flower as well. And that's it. There's our two flowers. I love how these turned out. They are so cute. I had so much fun making these. I've had the mason jar lids for quite a while, so it was finally fun to be able to use them in a DIY. And you can see the different sizes of the flowers based on the size of material strips that we cut. So the pink flower and the yellow flower, just some close-ups for you. And then let's go over the supplies for our third project today. 
We'll need the mason jar ring lids, also some hot glue and some scissors. We're going to need um, some colored pencils or markers, some olive oil, a piece of paper, and we are going to use some cotton at rounds or you can use cotton swabs. We'll need some twine and some ribbon. So let's get crafty. So what we're going to do is we're going to trace on our piece of paper, we're going to trace around the ring to make a template. And then taking our colored pencils, we're just going to create a fun, easy design. I didn't plan it out ahead of time. I just kind of started making little flower petals and some little dots and little uh, different shapes and designs and then filling it in with the colored pencils. I'll put a little bit of purple in here and I went in with a lighter blue and then we'll go back in with the lime green to create a large flower. Then I made some pink flower petals in the spaces. And then we'll use a darker green, almost like a teal color to create larger flower petals along the outer edge here. And then peach, we went in and filled in some flower petals to make it look like they were more in the background. And some more just fun designs in each space. We're trying to stick with a similar color pattern here. We're using like a couple shades of pink, a couple shades of blue, a couple shades of green. And we'll fill some hearts in around these open spots. And some little purple dots. And then we'll go ahead and cut out our design. You could also use a coloring book page or a printed picture, whichever you prefer. So then I went in with a black pen and I just trace the design that I just made to help the design to kind of pop off of the background. And this is just a Dollar Tree gel pen that I'm using. There's nothing special about it, just a regular ink pen. So I want to let that dry for just a few minutes to make sure the ink is dry. Then I trace the snap lid over top of our design and trim it to make sure it will fit inside of our lid. Then take your cotton swab and some olive oil and you're just going to rub over top of your design on the front and the back. And I did put a paper towel underneath. And this is making the paper have a see-through effect. It's kind of like a similar um, craft project or art project I think some of us have made way back in grade school where it will look like a stained glass picture where you're able to see through it because the light will be able to shine through the paper now that the oil has been applied. So now we're just going to take some hot glue and put that inside of the ring and then place our picture inside the ring, a little bit more hot glue around the edges to make sure that it's going to stay. And then I took this twine to create a hanger around the outer edge here. So we're just going to create a loop at the top and then wrap the twine all the way around the lid. And then I took some more twine and a little bit more hot glue and I just kept wrapping it around the lid, adding small amounts of glue every once in a while to make sure that the twine was going to stay in place and not slide over the front of the um, lid. As you can see, I just keep wrapping the twine, add a small amount of hot glue, and then just keep wrapping and pushing the uh, twine up close next to the last row that you completed. And just keep filling it in until you have it completely covered. So here's what it looks like on this side. And then we're just going to take another piece of twine and a few pieces of blue satin ribbon from Dollar Tree. We're going to just cut some strips that are about three inches long and just keep layering them in an X pattern. And then once we have about eight pieces, we're just going to tie it off in the center in a knot. 
and then fluff up the tassels. You can go ahead and cut off the excess twine. So we're not going to need that anymore. Just fluff your bow up and then you can go ahead and glue that to the top right in front of the hanger. And then I still thought I needed something else. So I ended up adding a Dollar Tree button to the top for the center of the bow. And these are really pretty to hang in the window. As the light passes through it, it looks like a small stained glass ornament. So now for our fourth and final project today, we need a large wood round. We're also going to use the scissors and hot glue. We'll need some white, black, red, and gray paint. We're also going to need a few different sizes of paint brushes and some ribbon. I also use some raffia and either a zip strip or a Chanel stem. So let's get crafty. So for this project, we are going to remove the hanger from the sign and we'll hold on to that because we are going to use it when the picture is finished and everything has been dried. So we're just going to take some white paint. We're going to completely cover our wood round with the white paint. And it may take one or two coats depending on um, the how thick your paint is. If it's a little bit thicker, it might only take one coat. If it's pretty thin, um, then you'll need two coats. It's really, you know, just personal preference if you like a full coverage or not. So I ended up doing two full coats of paint. I just let it dry between coats. So you're going to completely dry before we move to the next part. So I have both coats finished and they have dried. Then I take a very small detail brush and I water down my black paint with a little just tiny bit of water um, to smooth it out and that helps me get these little squiggly lines really easily around the edge of our sign. Now we're going to take a larger brush and the red paint and we're just going to create an arc on both sides. And I use the holes that were in the top for the hanger as my guide of where to start. And then you're just making the laces to a baseball. So it's just a kind of like an arrow, I guess you're making. Now, the thing you have to remember is for the baseball, the stitches on the opposite side will be going the opposite direction. And you want to make sure you do the same number of stitches on both sides. So I ended up going over the red paint. I did two coats of the red paint. Mine was a little bit thin and I could see the white through the red paint. So I ended up going back over this and did two coats of paint. I just let it dry in between. And now we're going to go back in with our detail brush and we're going to add a little bit of highlights with some white paint. It's basically a dry brush. I have a tiny little bit of white paint and I used just that one little bit for that whole entire side of stitching. And then we'll do the same to the other side of stitching. And now we'll add a little bit of shadow work, which is some light gray paint, just kind of like creating these little arced um, lines at the top, the bottom, and the sides. And this just helps it give it a rounded appearance. It doesn't look so flat. Too much, just a bare minimum amount of paint on your brush. You're basically using a dry brush here a tiny little bit of light gray paint. So we'll let that dry. And while that's drying, we'll create our bow. I have this um, burlap bow with the lace in the center from the Dollar Tree. I cut about 10 inch strips and we're just going to glue them into loops. Also, we'll do the same with this red burlap also from Dollar Tree. We'll just glue them together on the ends to create two more loops. And then we'll just create our bow by bunching up the loops that we made and putting them together. So I ended up doing a red piece, the two brown pieces, and then a red one on top. Then I had a um, cable tie, so that's what I'm going to use to tie the first part of our bow together. You can also use a Chanel stem, you can use some twine, you can use wires, anything will work. And fluff up your bow. A little bit 
And then we're going to make some more loops with some white satin ribbon. I just did two, it's a little bit smaller. And then I just used the red and white um, gingham fabric or ribbon here from Dollar Tree. I think I got it at like Valentine's Day. And we're just going to use that to tie the white ribbon to the front of our bow. And then make a raffia bow with the blue and natural color raffia. We'll put that in the middle and then we'll use this same piece that was already on our ribbon or our bow to tie the raffia on. And that is our bow. We'll replace the hanger that we took off when we first started the project. And then take your hot glue and go ahead and place your bow wherever you like on your baseball. If you don't like the way the bow is sitting, you can also glue some of the ends down to help um, make it sit the way you like. So here's some close-up pictures for you of our finished project. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make these crafts with me today. Don't forget we do these every Thursday and our Dollar Tree videos are posted every Tuesday and Friday. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.